Hey everybody, this is Steve, and as Christians, we may have a bigger job than we realize. Over the past few weeks, we've been taking a big picture look at the church. The way church buildings are designed, the way hierarchy works in the church, the role of our clergy, and the vestments they wear. This week, we'll zoom in a bit and look at the amazing call that we all share as Christians. To do that, we'll need to refresh our memories about something we covered last time. In our episode on vestments, remember, we talked about the stichadio, the basic and innermost vestment that clergy wear. And remember, I said that historically, it's usually white. Actually, the stichadio is supposed to be white because it is the robe of salvation, the white robe we receive on the day we're baptized, the white robe which symbolizes the new and true life we receive when we put on Christ. For many of us, this white robe is something we wore as babies and is tucked away in a closet or attic. Yet it's actually a vestment that we put on and symbolically wear throughout our lives. It's white as a sign of what salvation is. As Father Stephen Freeman is fond of saying, Jesus Christ didn't come to make bad men good. He came to make dead men live. And I'm very happy to introduce Father Stephen to help me talk about this wonderful call. The Son of God, the second person of the Holy Trinity, took on human flesh and human nature, becoming like us so we could become like him, live with him for all eternity in his kingdom. God is the source of life and all good things. Sin is more than moral mistakes or the breaking of rules, it's separation from God. And of course, since God is the source of life, to be separated from God is death. Death is nothingness, darkness, the void, as we've talked about before. It's the darkness into which we inevitably sink without the Lord. And it is only in our connection to the Lord, in literally becoming a part of Christ, a member of his body, that we can escape this terrible fate. In our union with Christ, we set aside everything about our false selves, dying to our old selves and becoming new in Christ. We become children of God, children of light. We enter the waters of baptism naked, carrying nothing of our faults and broken selves. When we emerge, we are immediately dressed in garments of white, a sign of new position as children of light who have received the gift of real and eternal life from God. So the first and most fundamental vestment which our clergy wear is this white robe, this sign of our new life in Christ. Yet, if it's a vestment, why is it something that all Christians wear? After all, we lay people aren't priests, right? Actually, you are. We Christians are called to be priests of creation. We are, in the words of the Apostle Peter, a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. That's in 1 Peter 2.9. And some of what you've covered in recent episodes can help us understand what this really means. Uh, for instance, think back to vestments, uh, which Steve discussed in the last episode. From head to toe, all vestments are united by one common theme, that of offering. Vestments are signs of the righteousness that must clothe our clergy, that our strength is actually God's strength, that our hands are actually God's hands, and all of this because the basic role of clergy is to offer on behalf of all. My brother clergy and I offer prayers for our health and well-being. We offer oil to be used for anointing. We offer water to be used for baptism. We offer bread and wine to become Christ's very body and blood. The most fundamental vestment is therefore the white vestment of baptism for good reason, because no person can be a deacon, presbyter, or a bishop without first being a Christian. That Christian identity is crucial and opens the door for clergy like Father Stephen and your parish priest to answer as God calls them to serve. Yet clergy are not the only ones who serve. They are not the only ones who offer. Remember, in our episode on hierarchy, we said that the church is a body made of different members that each play their own part. Everything from our eyes and ears to our hands and feet play a role in maintaining our lives. In a similar way, every member of the body of Christ 
plays a role in working for the life of the world. And it is a priestly role, a role of offering. Just as we clergy offer to God bread and wine made of the wheat and grapes which God first offers to us, our common job as Christians, as priests of creation, is to offer all things back to God. In a deeper sense, we're called to offer more than simply everything we have. We're called to offer everything we are. We're called to be the sort of people who develop the eyes needed to see God at work in every aspect of our lives, which is what Be the Bee is all about. The sort of people who develop the hearts needed to approach every person and every situation with kindness, gratitude, humility, patience, and love. In the words of Orthodox theologian Paul Evokimov, to truly be a priest of creation is to be the sort of person who makes of one's life a liturgy, a prayer, a doxology, to make of it a sacrament of perpetual communion. To truly reach that point, we must work so that all of our life, every act, every gesture, even the smile of the human face, must become a hymn of adoration, an offering, a prayer. One should offer not what one has, but what one is. If you're a Christian, you're already dressed for the job, vested in the garments of light as a child of God. Are you ready to make your offering? So let's be the bee and offer our new life back to the giver of life. Be the bee and live orthodoxy. Remember to like and subscribe and share. I'll see you all next week. Thanks to our supporters on Patreon who helped make this episode possible. To support the creation of more Orthodox Christian content, please visit patreon.com slash y2a.